Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, I'm going to talk about oscillating discontinuities. Here I've drawn the function sine of 1 over x. Here's its graph, and really my drawing doesn't do it justice. Uh, you can plug this into a computer graphing program if you want to get an even better picture. So I really narrowed in on this graph, and this is just the interval minus a half to a half. And you can see what happens in the middle here. It sort of does this rapid up and down motion, this rapid oscillation. And this is an, this is an example of an oscillating discontinuity. This is what a graphical representation of this type of discontinuity is. And I mean, you should know just by looking at the function sine of 1 over x, if you were to plug in 0 into that function, it wouldn't be very good because you'd be dividing by 0. So you know that there's some sort of discontinuity going on here. But it's unlike the other discontinuities because this discontinuity is not removable. There's no way to remove this discontinuity. It's not a jump discontinuity because this isn't a piecewise function or any kind of function with a jump in it. And it's not even an infinite discontinuity because of this extra trig value that's attached to the 1 over x. 1 over x is an infinite discontinuity, but if I throw the sine in front of it, the sine of 1 over x, well now I'm getting this oscillation. So let's find out why this is. Here I've listed a number of values of sine of 1 over x approaching 0 from the left and from the right side. So if you look at this table I've drawn here, this first row represents us approaching 0 from the uh, left side, and the second table is us approaching 0 from the right side. So these first row, you can see what happens. If I plug in minus 0.9, and I've rounded these values a little bit, I'm getting minus 0.896, okay. If I plug in minus 0.5, getting closer to zero from the left side, I'm getting minus 0.909, so in other words, the value dropped. But if I plug in minus 0.4, I get minus 0.58. Well, that's an increase. Now I'm starting to go back up with the values. And you can see as I plug in numbers closer to zero, I start getting more positive with my values and then more negative with my values. It looks like this limit isn't actually approaching anything. In fact, the limit from the left and the right just doesn't exist because the values, and you can see it's the exact same from the right, if I start plugging in values closer to zero going from the right side, my values start to increase and then decrease and then start to increase again. This is a type of oscillation, an oscillating discontinuity. And hence, since the values are not settling down to one single point, the limit does not exist. Hey, thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you have any recommendations for videos you'd like me to make. Have a great day.